nanotubes in their solid form look like this. And the idea would be to disperse these in a, in a liquid so that we can process them. However, for most solvents, like this is water, if you put nanotubes in the solvent, they don't disperse, they just all settle out at the bottom like that. And you can't use something like that. So if you shake it, it kind of come up, but, but uh, it'll just settle right back out. However, we use these really strong acids and they're able to disperse nanotubes really well and from a dispersion like this, this is a chlorosulfonic acid in nanotubes, from this we can process the nanotubes into fibers and films. So it's a, we use a strong solvent to disperse the nanotubes so that we can actually make them into useful things. Such as, well, we focus on fibers, um, aligned films, composites. One of the most well-known composite examples with nanotubes was in the Tour de France last year. There, one of the bikes was a carbon nanotube polymer composite that was exceptionally strong while still being lightweight, which that's exactly what you would want for a, a bike in the Tour de France. The reason that, that we try to make uh, these aligned fibers is uh, because of Kevlar. Kevlar is uh, a substance made by DuPont. It's made from rod-like polymers uh, to make things like bulletproof vests. And really that's what a nanotube is too. It's also a rod-like polymer. So you should be able to spin nanotubes into these strong fibers to make things like bulletproof vests. This is a glove box. This is a chamber that's, that's sealed off from the environment. We put uh, dry air through it. Whenever we work with acids and nanotubes, we work with it inside a glove box like this. The reason we use this is for two reasons. One is to protect us from the acid. The other is to protect the acid from the moisture in the air. These acids would react with the moisture in the air and make them less effective. So that's why we use something like this for all the work that we do with, with mixing nanotubes with acids. I think the fun part about research is that you get to meet a lot of people, you get to go to a lot of labs and work with different people. I was fortunate to work with uh, some great professors. Uh, I'm also going to France and uh, I'm working in Professor Coigny and Professor Lunis lab in uh, Bordeaux, which is a great experience. They have a lab full of optics. This is kind of like a small microscope, but they have all these huge microscopes and these, all these huge um, instruments that you can use. And it's kind of a very fun experience for me to get to know a lot of people uh, culturally and uh, scientifically, which is a great experience for me. Uh, during this research. I'm using a method that was developed by Professor Bruce Wiseman for visualizing my nanotubes. In our lab, we mostly work with carbon nanotubes. What we have is just, well, just a single wall carbon nanotube in water, which is being bombarded by, by the water molecules. So you see all these shapes and these um, vibrations that it acquires because of the uh, bombardment with the water molecules. But if you have it inside a gel, you have other molecules around the nanotube, so it's not going to move as freely as it moves in water. You can basically have an idea about what kind of an environment your nanotube is swimming in. The other thing is that what the movie you are looking at is looking at the fluorescence of a single wall carbon nanotube without using any dye or anything.